My name is Virgil, and I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened to me over the last couple of months. The reason for this is because I feel like I don't have much time left, and I want people to know what's happened to me. You see, I never believed in the idea that there was life on other planets. I always thought that if there were, they would surely visit us either out of curiosity or just the need to destroy something. This all started back in November when I was a senior in college. I wasn't exactly a popular student. The only people who I could really consider friends were a couple freshmen named Cody and another senior named Yuri. Cody had always been a really shy person. He has pretty poor social skills and he sort of just latched onto me. I didn't really mind it because I know what it's like to be shy. Yuri, on the other hand, is sort of the opposite of Cody. He's a social butterfly, for lack of a better word. He wants to be friends with everyone he meets, which kind of leads him to annoying people, because he never really stops trying. It was a pretty normal day. I went to my classes and then I hung out with Cody and Yuri. We were walking in the hallway when I found a pamphlet on the wall. It was an advertisement for a program that needed volunteers for a special project. It said that you would earn extra credit for participating and be paid 500 bucks. What the project was wasn't described in the pamphlet, but it had me interested nonetheless. A little extra credit and some money didn't sound bad. So, I looked at the location it was in, a part of the school that I had never heard of before. My college wasn't huge and it went by zones. Zone 1 was where the dorms were, Zone 2 was for classes, and Zone 3 was where everyone went to eat lunch. The pamphlet stated Zone 4, which I never knew even existed. A couple of hours later, I tried to look up Zone 4 in my college, and I had managed to find an old map in the library that had mentioned the area. It said that Zone 4 was about a mile out from my college, which was odd. Why did it add this area so far away from the campus? I didn't think too much about it, so I got ready and I got on my bike. It was about 5 p.m. when I had reached the area. It didn't really look like a college campus. It looked more like a lab of some sort. It was a relatively large building with a giant antenna on the top. There was a car parked out front and three people standing by the entrance. One was a woman who looked pretty short. She had long black hair and green eyes and seemed pretty nervous. The second was a man who was the tallest of all of us. He had short brown hair and blue eyes and a slim figure. And finally, there was another guy. He was around my height and he was bald. He was the strangest of the group. He had gray eyes and he looked at the other two, with a suspicious look it seemed, like he didn't trust anyone. He stood away from the others and looked at me with a dead expression on his face. I got off my bike and I walked to the two and introduced myself. Hi, I'm, I'm Lily, the woman said in a nervous tone. She didn't look at me when she talked. Her voice was really soothing. Hey, I'm Alex, the tall man said while shaking my hand. He seemed like a decent person and he had a confident vibe to him. I asked about the bald guy and Alex told me that his name is Quinn and to not to pay any attention to him. He keeps to himself mostly and he hasn't even said a word to anyone. About five minutes pass and someone opens the door and tells us to come in. And we all walked in and we looked around. The first floor of the building was the reception area. It was a somewhat ran-down looking area with a desk and an old-looking computer on top. The walls were a depressing gray, 
and the floors were white tile. There were no windows except for the door and the lights that weren't very bright. The person who had told us to come in was the secretary. She was a tall woman with curly blonde hair and a somewhat uneasy smile. It was almost like she was hiding something. She told us in a chipper voice that the head of the project would be here shortly and to wait here. We all nodded our heads and we waited about 15 minutes. There was a somewhat disturbing aura to this whole thing. I could have put my finger on it at the time. The head finally arrived and we were greeted by a short man in a lab coat. He looked to be in his mid-40s and he had a black beard. His eyes were piercing and he was missing a hand. Hello, my name is Dr. Popowitz, he said in a cheerful tone. His voice was deep and rough. Thank you all for participating in Project Orion. The purpose of this project is to prove that we are not alone in the universe. That somewhere deep within this solar system, there is a civilization of beings who we will welcome with open arms. He was really passionate about what he just said. We all sort of looked at him with confusion. Now, I know that I probably seem, well, crazy, but I assure you that I'm not. He sounded a little nervous when he had said that. Anyways, please follow me and I'll give you all the tour of the building. We all looked at each other and I gave a shrug. And we then proceeded to follow the doctor. He showed us around the complex, telling us about the various rooms and gave a little insight into his life. He had been looking for signs of extraterrestrial life for over 25 years. And he believes that he finally might be onto something and he's going to need our help. Of course, I thought that this guy was out of his mind, but hey, a little money couldn't hurt. After showing us around, he finally stopped in a large room. There were monitors everywhere, and some kind of radio, it looked like, in the center of the room. Man, this is where you'll be helping me. It's pretty simple work. You all will be watching these monitors for three days. And if you see or hear anything, then speak into the intercom here. And he points to the intercom on the wall. Now, I should mention that none of you are allowed to expose the purpose of this project. I've worked too hard to get to where I am now and I can't have anyone finding out what this is. We all nodded and he showed us to our respective monitors. He told us what each button does and then proceeded to walk off. I looked around, and everyone was doing their job, except for Quinn. He just kept looking at me. Actually, now that I think of it, I don't think he ever stopped looking at me. I felt uneasy, and I tried to ignore him, and I looked at my monitor. There was nothing but stars and distant planets. It was rather peaceful, honestly. After a few hours, we heard Dr. Popowitz speak through a speaker. You may all go home. Please return tomorrow at 6 p.m. I groaned and got up and I walked out of the room. I checked my phone and it was 1 a.m. I was pretty tired, so I went back to my dorm. As I was walking out, I saw Quinn staring at me again. I got annoyed and asked him why he won't stop looking at me. He didn't reply. He just kept looking. For a second, I could have sworn that his eyes had changed colors. I got fed up and I walked out of the building. Nothing happened on the second day. It was the final day when... It actually happened. I still remember the exact date and time. November 30th, at 11.21pm. I was looking at my monitor when suddenly... A weird noise had started up. It was garbled. We all looked around and realized that the radio was on. It seems like it picked up some kind of transmission. My eyes widened and I ran to the intercom and told the doctor that we think we had found something. In mere seconds, he dashed into the room and I explained what happened. 
He ran to the radio and began frantically saying, Hello, is there someone there? After a few attempts, someone or something spoke. Why have you contacted us? The voice was deep and unsettling. I, I don't mean any harm. My name is Dr. Popowitz, and I'm from the planet Earth. We wanted to prove that we weren't alone in the universe. The doctor seemed really excited. I couldn't believe that we actually made contact with other life. Everything I thought was a lie. I felt excitement and fear. Earth, that loathsome little planet, the voice replied. Yes, for so many years I've waited for this moment. Please, may we see what you look like? The doctor was in a state of pure bliss. After a few seconds of silence, the monitors went black. They came back on shortly after, and that's when we saw them. We looked out in fear as we saw the faces of the beings that we had made contact with. They had long, slim bodies, and their heads were unnaturally round and smooth. Their eyes were a deep shade of red. It was almost hypnotizing. They had no mouth, and yet they could speak. Their skin was like baby blue, and they had claws for hands. I felt a pit on my stomach, and I started to question if this was the right thing to do. I looked at the others, and they all shared the same look as me, except for Popowitz and Quinn. They had a look of excitement as if this was what they had wanted. The doctor starts laughing like an insane man and then turns to us. All my work has finally paid off. They called me insane. Those idiots. Now I prove that we are not alone. He could barely contain his joy. Suddenly, the building started shaking, and the creature said, <laughs> Your curiosity will be your undoing. A portal on the roof started to open, and soon after, one of those things landed on the floor. He towered over all of us and just stared. Popowitz's expression went from joy to pure fear in an instant. What, what do you mean? He asked. The creature turned around and looked at him. And then he picked the doctor up without actually touching him. What, what are you doing? Put me down. He demanded, but the creature would not listen. We all watched as the creature slammed the doctor into the wall several times with incredible force. All we could hear was the sounds of bones being crushed and drywall cracking. He finally tosses the doctor into the monitors. They all crackle and glass flies everywhere. We all gasped and I began to shake. I tried to run, but my body was frozen. It was as if that monster had kept us from being able to run. The being looked over at Quinn and it walked to him. He still had that smile on his face, and he finally spoke. It's about time. His voice had an echo to it, and his body began to change into his true form. You wouldn't believe how long I've been here, Quinn said as he looked at us. The good doctor finally got the proof that he wanted to. It's too bad he won't live to tell it, and neither will any of you. Every fiber of my being wanted to run. I looked over to Lily and Alex and they were petrified. Lily began to sob and Alex said, You, why are you doing this? Quinn looked at him and explained, Oh, it's simple really. I crashed here five years ago and needed to get back. However, my transmitter was broken so I had no way to get back or to contact my people. So, I took some human's body and wandered around this pitiful planet, until I finally found the late doctor. He was obsessed with finding extraterrestrial life, so I tricked him into doing all of this, 
and he outlived his usefulness. I leave no loose ends. Alex clenched his fist and wanted to attack Quinn and the other being. He ran towards them, but before he could even land a finger on one of them, they grabbed him and began to slowly rip him apart. Lily began screaming and she ran out of the room. I followed her. All we heard was the sound of screaming and flesh being torn. The lights went out and we were left in total darkness. Lily was panicking and I was trying to calm her down. Those, those things, they just, they killed him without a second thought. Lily was on the verge of hyperventilating and I couldn't blame her. I was trying to control my fear, but it was getting harder every second. I looked past Lily's shoulder and saw two pairs of red eyes. God, Lily, we need to run now. I told her as I grabbed her hand and pulled her with me. I didn't know where I was going, but I was in pure survival mode. We just ran and ran in what felt like an endless maze of corridors. But every second I ran the closer those things felt to me. After what felt like an eternity, I saw an elevator light. I told Lily to follow me, and we ran to the elevator and pressed the button as fast as we could. Come on, come on, come on, hurry up. I was breathing heavily, and so was Lily. The elevator finally arrived and we ran in. However, as the door was about to close, one of the creatures grabbed Lily and pulled her out. All I heard was her screaming as the door closed and it took me to the first floor. I tried to take a moment to calm myself, but I couldn't. I thought I was going to die here, that they would be on the first floor waiting for me. The elevator pinged and the door slowly opened. I was glad to see the exit sign above the front door. I ran as fast as I could to the exit, and with all my strength, I slammed the door open and fell onto the ground. I wasn't even thinking. I just ran and ran and ran. I even left my bike. I somehow managed to get out of there, but I was the only one, the sole survivor. After what felt like forever, I finally made it back to my dorm. As soon as I had opened the door, I passed out and didn't wake up for several hours. When I did wake up, I was in the nurse's office. Cody and Yuri were by my side and I never felt so good to see them. They asked me what had happened and I told them what actually happened. About Popowitz, the creatures, Lily and Alex. They thought that I was crazy but I told them that I was telling the truth and that I would even show them. After I was better, I told them that I would show them Zone 4, and we got into Yuri's car and we drove there. What I saw shocked me. The building was gone. There was no trace of it, just trees. They asked if I got the right location. I told them that I knew this was where Zone 4 was, but it was like there was never anything there at all. Yuri told me that I must have imagined it or something, and we drove back to college. No one believed me, but I know what I saw. Weeks went by, and I still had nightmares about what had happened. I could still see the faces of those things. I could still hear the screaming. I even heard them taunting me. Their voices echoed in my mind. I felt like I was going to go insane. I finally had had enough, and I wanted to just get away from everything. So, I decided to drop out of college and just move away. Surprisingly, it worked. I didn't have nightmares or anything. I didn't even hear their voices. Until a couple of days ago, that is. I mentioned earlier that the reason I'm writing this was because I felt like I didn't have much time left until they found me. Well, they did. I started hearing the voices again, and I saw flashes of them taking me in various ways. I should have known there would be no escape. Even as I type this out, I can hear their voices echo in my head. Believe me or don't, it doesn't matter anymore. I'll see you soon, Quinn.